What's up guys, Mr. Mom? Bringing it at you on a Saturday, people. Um, just wanted to make a quick video, talk about what I'm doing today, as usual. Messing around with my tanks, nothing new about that. I'm actually rolling nine fish tanks right now, guys, and uh, actually ten here soon because the 29 gallon that I got just sitting in the laundry room right now looking like a like a like an empty shell of a tank um, is actually going to be my 29 reef tank here in a few weeks so working on that guys getting that going but I uh, want to talk about this tank I'm just going to keep it to one tank at a time in these videos guys because it just gets too chaotic so I'm going to talk about the 33 long today and you know what's going on in this tank really what's going on is melting um, most of these plants came you know from other tanks and stuff um, some of them are new but the thing is with plants guys they're always going to melt when you plant them and th I mean the reason being is because wherever you're pulling them from and w whatever new tank you're putting them in the water parameters are going to be different the lighting is different the substrate's different um, you know the nutrient level in the water blah 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 everything's different so basically what's going to happen with most plants is you're going to experience some sort of melting or dieback of some sort um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the plants unhealthy guys um, it just means that the plants are adjusting to your tank so in this tank in particular I'm getting a lot of a lot of melting um, a lot of dieback and I'll try and show you over here on this end of the tank um, I don't know how, how well you guys can see it, you know, with, with the video and stuff because it never picks up colors properly, as you know. But, I mean, there's just a lot of, you know, on all the, like, narrowly sag and, and uh, the dwarf sag, a lot of melting on that stuff. i got to get back and cut all that stuff back. Um, I mean, even on the crypts here, like this bronze windetti right there, um, like this leaf right here that's shooting up, boom, that thing's melting off, got to be clipped. And, um, I mean, what you're going to want to do is just, you know clip off the dead stuff guys I mean I got a bunch of random plants in here um, clip off the dead guys and just you know let the new grow in the new stuff that grows in is going to be acclimated it's going to be adjusted to your tank and it's going to grow um, like this big piece of narrowly sedge right here is melting out violently right now so um, I don't know, this tank is wicked though, guys. I mean, it's so like short. I mean, you can see the heater up there. I gotta cock it diagonally, like violently, just because that's how shallow it is, guys. It's like 12 inches, so just stoked about the way this tank looks, guys. And and it's just, it's gonna really become a grow out tank probably more than anything. Not like I'm gonna be pulling stuff out of it constantly, but um, as far as livestock in this fish, it's gonna have the cleanup crew. Probably put a bush nose in here, you know. Um, I already got some auto sinkless. You can see that guy cruising back and forth there. Um, this tank's going through a little bit of an algae bloom, too, so those guys are fired up about that. And then you see the first inhabitants there the rummy nose i've got eight in there right now just because i start out slow but that's all it's going to have guys is just a bunch of rummy nose because i just like the, the way they school together it looks wicked when they school and uh, i'm into that i'm into wickedness guys so we're just going to let it roll with the easy tetras but we're going to put a bunch of them in there i'm talking like you know 25 of those bastards in there and just let them school up violently and just look wicked and then it's just all going to be about the plants like i got some pearl weed clippings i took out of the tin um rolling those guys and even they're melting back a little bit, guys, because for one, they're just clippings. They don't have any really, like, roots of their own, so to speak. So they're definitely going to, you know, melt back and, and stuff a little bit. But uh, they'll be fine, guys. They'll be fine. Um, and then, of course, this wicked log right here, I'm going to go ahead and tie some moss on that. And actually, this... Oh, God, my back. My back is my back is like a sock full of marbles, people. I'm laying on the floor, show you the 33-gallon. I don't know how often I'll show that tank just because it's, you can see, it's on the floor, guys. So, I um, mean, you know, I got my 40 long that sits on top of that. So, um, special treat for you guys today. But I am going to go ahead and I'm tying some moss. So, as you can see... Got my cup of moss here. This is just Java moss, guys. Pretty simple, but I got a bunch of it, so um, got that. Got this piece of marble right here, just because I have a shitload of marble that I collect. But I'm just going to lay it flat, and this is going in my shrimp tank. This I'm just going to cover this rock with uh, moss, and uh, it's going in the shrimp tank and uh, the breeding tank. I'm breeding cherry shrimp and bumblebee shrimp. I've got colonies of each that are just going strong right now that I'm giddy about too. So um, yeah, 
pretty cool piece of marble. I mean, it's kind of undramatic and it's, it's stained and stuff. So I'm just going to wrap it up with moss. And uh, yeah, the shrimp can just go nuts on it and do what God intended for them to do. This is what I use, guys, to tie my moss. Um, it's four pounds. Um, this is actually kind of big. If you can get even smaller diameter, that's, you know, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's just fishing line, guys. And I, I get the low, you know, like the low visibility green color or whatever. When you're tying moss and stuff, you don't even see it, guys, when the moss, you know, grows in a little bit. So, yeah, I'll tie the moss. Um, I'm doing that. i got some root tabs to put in. Um, I'll come back to you here, guys, in a minute and show you what it looks like when I tie the moss on. So... All right, guys, I got some moss tied to this bad boy. I got it spread out pretty good. You want to spread it out, you know, as good as you as you can, guys, um, on here. I mean, it's, you know, it's spread out as, as about as good as I can get it. So um, fired up about the moss, guys. Fired up about the shrimp tank. I'm not going to bring you the shrimp tank, though, because, like I said, I'm going to keep it to one tank of video, guys. So final shot of the 33. I do want to say, guys, thanks for everybody um, who's been coming up fired up fish tanks .com. Fired up fish tanks, guys. It's, it's, it's there for you people. Um, there's a lot of good guys on there and girls um, that know a lot about fish tanks, a lot of different kinds of stuff, anything from dirty tanks, you you know, non-dirted tanks, uh, saltwater tanks, planet tanks, cichlid tanks, um, you know, beta tanks. It don't even matter. So, guys, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. If you got any questions, um, you know, hit us up, me, J Flesh Tanks. Um, you can get a hold of us there if you have any questions or comments or anything for us. Um, if you want to, you know, hate our videos or anything like that, go ahead and do it, guys. We love it all, people. Um, thanks for spending a couple minutes on your Saturday watching my little video. Um, hope you learned something. There's some moss tied to a rock, guys. It's going in the shrimp tank. It's going to sit just like that, and uh, you'll see that one day. So, yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Uh, J Flesh Tanks, Mr. Mom Tanks, FiredUpFishTanks.com. Peace.